Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators, and we'll go through two examples each, two addition, two subtraction. So let's jump into our examples, starting with number one, where we have four ninths plus one third. Now, when we add fractions, we need a common denominator. In other words, the bottom numbers need to be the same in order to add. For number one, we have a nine and a three. So obviously, we don't have a common denominator to start with, so we can't add quite yet. So the first thing that we need to do is find a common denominator. And we can do that by finding the least common multiple between our denominators. Now, as far as why we need a common denominator, that's a topic for another video. I'll drop that link down in the description. So you may recognize the least common multiple between denominators right away when you see the problem, but if not, you can always write out your lists of multiples in order to find it. Let's write out the multiples of nine and three. So I'll come to the bottom of the screen where I have some extra room to write out these lists. We'll start with nine. So nine. The first multiples of nine are nine, 18, 27, 36. So I'll write four multiples of nine there. I would suggest writing out four or five multiples of each see if you have any common multiples, and if not, you can always extend your lists. So let's do three now and see if we have any common multiples. Three, six, nine, and it looks like we have a common multiple of nine. And more specifically, that's going to be the least common multiple. We always want to find the least common multiple Smaller numbers in value are generally easier to work with, and this will help cut down on simplifying in the end. So nine is going to be our common denominator. Let's come back up to the original problem and rename these fractions with our common denominator of nine. So underneath, I'm going to write our common denominator of nine, and now we can rename. So we'll start with four ninths. Well, four ninths already has a denominator of nine, so we don't need to rename. So we can just bring the four down. As far as one third, we need to think three times what equals nine? How do we get three to equal nine? Well, we know three times three equals nine. Now, in order to rename, we want to have an equivalent fraction. We want to keep this equivalent. We do not want to change the value of the problem at all. So whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator. So one times three is three. Three ninths is equivalent to one third, but we have that common denominator of nine now. Now that both fractions have a common denominator, we can add. So when we add fractions, we add the numerators, the top numbers, four plus three is seven. And then we keep the denominator the same, so nine. Seven ninths is our final answer. Now it's common practice to simplify fractional answers. So we look to see if we can break this fraction down at all. Are there any common factors between seven and nine besides one? Can we simplify? No, the only common factor between seven and nine is one. So this is in simplest form and we are done. Seven ninths is our final answer. Let's try another one and move on to number two where we have three tenths plus two sixths. So the first thing that we wanna do, we need to find a common denominator. So let's write out the multiples of 10 and six. We'll start with 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40. So we'll write out four multiples for each. Let's do six now. Six, 12, 18, 24. So four for each, and we don't have a common multiple. That's okay, we can extend our lists. Now, the multiples of 10, we're already at 40, 
and the multiples of 6 were only at 24, so let's extend that list. So after 24 would be 30, and now we have a common multiple, and specifically the least common multiple. So 30 is going to be our common denominator. Let's rename our fractions with that denominator of 30. Let's start with 3 tenths. So we need to think, how do we get 10 to equal 30? 10 times what equals 30? Well, 10 times 3 equals 30. We know 10 times 3 equals 30. In order to keep this equivalent, whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator. So multiply the numerator by 3 as well. 3 times 3 is 9. So 9 thirtieths is equivalent to 3 tenths, but we have that common denominator of 30 now. Now we do 2 sixths. So we think, how do we get 6 to equal 30? 6 times what is 30? Well, 6 times 5 is 30. Whatever we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator. So 2 times 5 gives us 10. 10 thirtieths is equivalent to 2 sixths. Now that we found the common denominator, we renamed, we can add. So add the numerators. 9 plus 10 is 19. Keep the denominator of 30. And our final answer is 19 thirtieths. We can check to see if we can simplify, but 19 thirtieths is in simplest form. The only common factor between 19 and 30 is 1, so we are done. So there you have it. There's how you add fractions with unlike denominators. Let's move on to subtraction and try two of those examples as well. We'll start with number one, where we have five sixths minus three twelfths. And just like adding fractions with unlike denominators, when we subtract, we need a common denominator. For number one, we have a six and a 12. So we don't have a common denominator to start with, so we can't subtract quite yet. The first thing that we need to do is find a common denominator. And we can do that by finding the least common multiple between our denominators. We want the least because smaller numbers in value are generally easier to work with, and this will help cut down on simplifying in the end once we get to our answer. As far as why we need a common denominator, that's a topic for another video. I'll drop that link down in the description. Now, as you're looking at a subtraction problem involving fractions with unlike denominators, you may recognize the least common multiple between denominators right away. But if not, you can always write out your lists of multiples in order to find it. So let's start by writing some multiples of both 6 and 12 and see if we can find that least common multiple. We'll start with 6. So I'm going to come to the bottom of the screen where I have some extra room to write out these lists, and we'll start with 6. So I would suggest writing out 4 or 5 multiples for each denominator and see if you can find that least common multiple. If not, you can always extend the lists until you find that least common multiple. So if 4 or 5 multiples don't work and you don't see any common multiples, extend those lists. So the first four multiples of six are six, 12, 18, 24. Now we'll do 12. So the first multiple of 12 is 12. Now no need to go on if you find that least common multiple because if you look, we have a least common multiple of 12. So we are ready to move to the next step, which is rename. So 12 is going to be our common denominator. I'm going to come back up to the original problem underneath and start to write the renamed fractions with that common denominator of 12. So underneath, I'll start these fractions with that common denominator of 12. And now we're going to rename. We'll start with 5 sixths. So we're going to rename that fraction with an equivalent fraction with the denominator of 12. So we need to think, how do we get the denominator of 6 to equal the denominator of 12? 6 times what equals 12? Well, we know that 6 times 2 
equals 12. So whatever we do to the denominator, the bottom number, we have to do to the numerator, the top number, in order to keep this fraction equivalent. We don't want to change the value of the problem at all. So we need to do 5 times 2 to get the renamed numerator. 5 times 2 is 10. So 10 twelfths is equivalent to 5 sixths. So we renamed with that denominator of 12. Now we need to do 3 twelfths. Well, 3 twelfths already has a denominator of 12, so we don't need to rename. We can just bring the 3 down. Once we rename, we can subtract. When we subtract fractions, we subtract the numerators. So 10 minus 3 is 7. And then we keep the denominator of 12 the same. So 7 twelfths is our answer. Now always look to simplify. So can we simplify 7 twelfths? Well, 7 twelfths is in simplest form. The only common factor between 7 and 12 is 1. So we can't break this down any further um, as far as simplifying goes. So our final simplified answer, 7 twelfths. Let's try another one and move on to number 2, where we have 9 tenths minus 2 fourths. So the first thing that we need to do, find a common denominator. So we need that least common multiple between 10 and 4, and that's going to be our common denominator. Let's go down to the bottom and write out some multiples. So we'll start with 10, and we'll write out 4 multiples to start with. So 10, 20, 30, 40. Now let's write out four multiples of four and see if we have a least common multiple. So four, eight, 12, 16. So writing out four multiples for each, we don't have a match. So we need to extend our lists. Now the multiples of 10, we are already at 40. And the multiples of 4, we're only at 16. So let's extend that one. And the next multiple of 4 is 20. And that's going to give us a common multiple and specifically the least common multiple. So we're going to use 20 for our common denominator. Let's go back up to the original problem underneath and rename with that common denominator of 20. We'll start with 9 tenths. So how do we get that denominator of 10 to equal 20? Well, 10 times 2 is 20. And whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator in order to keep this equivalent. So 9 times 2 gives us 18 for our renamed numerator. So 18 twentieths is equivalent to 9 tenths. We just have that uh, common denominator of 20 now. Now we need to do 2 fourths. So how do we get 4 to equal 20? Well, we know 4 times 5 equals 20. So 4 times 5 equals 20. So we need to do the same thing to the numerator in order to get that renamed equivalent fraction with the denominator of 20. So same thing to the numerator. 2 times 5 gives us 10. Now we're ready to subtract. So subtract the numerators, the top numbers. 18 minus 10 is 8. Keep the denominator of 20. And our final answer is 8 twentieths. Now 8 twentieths can be simplified. There are multiple paths that we can take in order to get this into simplest form. But if we use the greatest common factor between 8 and 20, we can simplify it in one step. The greatest common factor between 8 and 20 is 4. So let's divide both of these by 4 in order to get our simplified answer. So 8 divided by 4 and 20 divided by 4. That's going to give us a simplified answer of 2 fifths. So 2 fifths is our final simplified answer. Now, just to be clear, 8 twentieths is the correct answer, but we were able to simplify that fraction and get a simplified answer of 2 fifths. So there you have it. There's how you add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators. 
Now there's a part two to both the addition and subtraction sections. If you'd like more examples, I drop those links down in the description, along with other related fraction videos. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.